first year of master's degree and it is when I choose to do my master thesis on the short stories of Helen Simpson, an English author, that I discovered all the concepts and theories around short form. I learned a lot about short forms during this year, especially as short form is one of the main research fields in my university. And now that I'm aware of this concept, I understand that we are surrounded by short forms. They are present not only in literature, but their omnipresent is felt in the fragmented, fragmented pieces of information, uh, communication methods, posts on social media, etc. in our day-to-day -day life. I think the concept of short form is related to each person's subjective conception of time. So uh, we relate the idea of shortness to something that can be consumed very quickly, or in other words, in a short period of time. So I would say a short form is any form of content, visual, audio, or even written, that can be consumed quickly and briefly. Uh, I think for me, short forms mean any production containing a necessary amount of information in a condensed and precise manner and structured well enough uh, for its audience to understand. So I'm not sure whether there is a concrete definition of short forms, but um, every time I'm hearing about short forms, I'm wondering what would be the long form. So I guess my definition would be a, ve a very relative one for long and short forms. And what is also crucial of short forms, I guess, is that they are very dense and very concise, and they have to be because they are supposed to be short. I can choose one, just one of them because all are different and used for a multiple purpose. For example, the symbol of a tower card provides a whole net of signification depending on your sensibility. Emoji, for example, translates emotion better than word can do. And tattoo is an example of an history and a way to compare your style, etc. So. Uh, my short form is um, caricatures. We have famous examples all around um, the world that prompted rage, intense reactions and protests in some cases, including, for instance, Charlie Hebdo in uh, France and how it sparked political issues and huge political propaganda, not only in France, but all around the world. So I think the training program has been very useful to all of us because it helped us tackle short forms in all the complexity. Um, so one of the most important things for us was probably gaining awareness of how frequent short forms are and how often they appear in our, in our environment, in our everyday environment. Um, so through the past few days we actually learned not only to spot them but also to use them both in teaching contexts and in our research and our personal projects. Um, so I thought that was that was very, very interesting and um, it really had an impact in how we think about our society and the flows of information and the flows of knowledge that kind of inform it and make it different to preceding um, societies and what other generations experienced. So I think that was, that was very important for all of us and also the kind of relating how the short form plays a part in our everyday life and a way to communicate with one another with each of our different cultural backgrounds coming from the different European institutions. So I think that was a very enlightening experience um, for all of us in the workshop. I think I've been uh, familiar with the short forms long before through traditional media, such as newspaper articles and letter writing. But I came face to face with short forms through abbreviations, indexing and style sheets. While teaching research methods to master's students last year, in academic writing, parenthetical references, paraphrasing have been standard examples of short form usage as well as grammatical implementation such as acronyms, initialism, contraction and subsectioning. I intend to be part of academic teaching of literary theory and diaspora studies in future and I think short forms can be included through podcasts, videos, blogs to make literary scholarship more interdisciplinary, precise and topic oriented. I love literature and its use changes the air of my classroom. So this is how short forms found their way in my world. A short story by Ernest Hemingway, The Old Man of the Bridge, and a poem by Ted Hughes, There Came a Day, 
lured two groups of 10 and 12 year olds of a Greek primary school into meaningful exchanges and discussions and confirmed that short forms have got the power to connect the time and place of the writer to the time and place of the reader. Kids talked about the relation of humans and animals, the impact of war on the lives of both, and they related a past event, the Spanish Civil War, to the current gloomy reality of the war in Ukraine. Short forms also provide a canvas for joy. The poem on the sift from summer to autumn brought so many beautiful images of nature into the classroom and got children in the school kitchen for a tasty merge of Greek and English culinary experience over a blueberry pie. The journey will hopefully continue. I might even consider engaging my future teacher mentees into this adventure and will most probably inform you via a tweet. So there are many things around us that can be conceptualized as short forms and some are even entitled like this. For example, short messages or short stories. And you could also think of voice messages or emojis or even memes, which many people are using in their everyday life to create and share the perspectives of the world, which is a world which does not explain itself, but is and has been explained in many ways, often through short forms. So if we want to understand the present and the past, we may also need to understand the usages, functions and receptions of various short forms.